Hi everyone, today I wanted to show off and talk about my latest lapidary tool. I designed and built this rock tumbler, affectionately named Janus, myself. It's been running for about a month now, and I'm really happy with how it's working. Let's take a look at how I designed and built Janus and some of the challenges I ran into along the way. Now this video isn't going to be a tutorial of how to build your own, but I think it'll be a good starting point if you do want to build one for yourself. So why did I build a rock tumbler? The obvious reason is I wanted to make rocks smooth and shiny, but they already make devices that are pre-built that do that exact thing. In fact, I actually owned one of those pre-built devices myself. I owned a Chicago Electric Tumbler from Harbor Freight. Now I could probably spend an entire video talking about the issues I had with that tumbler, and maybe someday I will, but for now, let's just say it lasted about 4 months before it bricked itself. Luckily I had some warning that it was on its last legs. <laughs> So I was able to prepare, and was only without a tumbler for about two weeks give or take. Before I could begin designing Janice, I had to come up with a list of deliverables. I wanted her to be able to tumble up to two 12 pound Loratone barrels, or at least four 3 pound barrels, or a mix of one 12 pound barrel and two 3 pound barrels. Secondly, I needed Janice to be easy to build. I have plenty of knowledge on how to use tools, but I don't have very many of those tools so I needed the build to be relatively easy. Plus, by keeping it simple, if something goes wrong, it's easy to fix. My last deliverable was I needed Janus to be relatively inexpensive. I just didn't want to spend a lot on this build. I knew it wasn't going to be cheap, and I'll talk more about total cost in a little bit, but I at least wanted it to cost less than its pre-built counterpart. I think all of that is doable, mostly because I already did it. So let's take a look at the design. To actually design Janus, I used a free computer-aided design software called Tinkercad. Here's my design. It definitely focuses a lot more on functionality and simplicity than aesthetics. It's a little different from the finished product, but this was more for me so I could get a pretty good idea of the overall design and dimensions. I think the design is pretty self-explanatory. The motor turns this little pulley, which is connected to this much bigger pulley, via a belt. The bigger pulley is connected to this rod, which is what turns the barrels. Like I said, simple, but functional. So we have our plans. Now we need some materials. And materials cost money, so I'm also going to lump overall cost into this section too. This project cost me a lot less than it could have, but it was still pretty expensive. I got extremely lucky a few different times. The first stroke of luck was finding an old sump pump at a secondhand store. The nice thing about sump pumps is they have a big continuous duty electric motor. This motor was exactly what I needed. It was a one-third horsepower motor, which is probably overkill for what I need, but now I don't have to worry about overloading the barrels or anything. Plus, it was really cheap, all wired up, thermally protected, which is important because I didn't want to burn my house down, and it even had a switch. I also found the wood I needed at that same store, so I saved more money there. The other thing I really lucked out on was the three-quarter inch, three-foot steel bars. I couldn't find them anywhere at the local hardware stores, and to ship them would have been pretty expensive. After doing a bit more looking, I found out we had a local steel supply place. I called and asked if they had 3 quarter inch, 3 foot long steel bars, and they did. They said it was going to be about $13. Now I was thinking $13 per bar, which was a little expensive, but it was a lot less than shipping it. But when they actually gave me the bill, it was only $13 for both 3 foot sections. So I was pretty happy about that. Now the most expensive part by far of this build was the 12 pound barrel. It cost three times more than what I paid for the motor. Luckily I was able to use my two three pound barrels from my Chicago electric tumbler, so that saved me another 50 to $60. Other than that, I paid full price for all the pillow block bearings, the pulleys, the V-belt, and hardware. I also accidentally bought the wrong size pulley and the shipping cost to return it was higher than what I had actually paid for it, so I lost about $10 there. So now I had all the parts and the plans. The next logical step was to build it, and that's exactly what I did. With some help from the soundtrack from the video game Doom, the build went fairly smooth. I only broke one 3 32nd inch drill bit and one screw. I did end up having to modify my design a bit because the one piece of wood I had wasn't really strong enough to hold the motor mount to the mainframe when the belt was on, and I also had to add a little plastic shim to get the belt tension right. 
but other than that, everything else pretty much went according to plan. The thing I was most worried about was actually securing the motor. To do that, I used these two 6-inch hose clamps that I cut in half and screwed into the wood. I used them because they have this little tightening screw at the top so I could adjust them if needed. They're also thin and won't cover any of the cooling vents on the motor. Which is good, because like I said, I don't want to burn our house down. They worked really well, and that motor isn't going anywhere. The other main thing I was worried about was coming up with a system to keep the barrels from wandering off the rails, and to keep the big barrel from bumping into the smaller barrels. You probably wouldn't think that that would be much of an issue, but the two sized barrels are actually spinning at different speeds. The little ones rotate at around 42 RPM, and the big one rotates at about 24 RPM. Here's the math to show how I figured that out. Now I could have probably just used one of these uh, barrel guides that Loratone makes, but I didn't really want to for a few reasons. The first is that I'm cheap, and the second reason is I didn't know if they'd work with my Chicago Electric barrels, so instead I came up with this. I just used these little sliding door rollers mounted to a scrap piece of wood we had. And yes, you do need two wheels in the center. And that's because, although the two barrels are rotating in the same direction, the ends of them are actually mirrored, so the two wheels are spinning in opposite directions. Plus the barrels are spinning at different speeds. Now I think if I adjusted them a little better, I could maybe make room for one more three pound barrel, but for now, I'm happy with where things are. The whole build probably took around eight hours to complete. As we continue to watch this time lapse, you might be wondering if this is something I'd recommend others trying. The short answer is probably not. The long answer is a bit more complicated. A rock tumbler is a relatively simple machine, but it's still a lot of work building your own. And although they aren't overly complex, the components go through a lot of abuse. There's not really any plans out there, so you're doing everything from scratch. I took some engineering and shop classes in high school and college, so I at least had the advantages of knowing how to design things, how to use a CAD program, and how to build things. Using a CAD program isn't completely necessary, but it definitely helps and saves quite a bit of graph paper. Now I spent a lot of time designing and building Janus, but the majority of the time spent on this project was actually spent researching and trying to source parts. It's pretty hard to find parts that aren't super expensive, but are still high quality. And you need those high quality components because this thing's running pretty much non-stop. Another thing to consider is that although I saved a lot of money comparatively, it could easily have ended up as just an expensive box of parts. And like I said earlier on this video, I really lucked out on some of the parts. Another thing to consider is how many rocks you're tumbling. In the summer I usually go rock hounding like once or twice a week, and I'm usually bringing home a few pounds of rocks each time and my six pound tumbler just couldn't keep up with that. I also wanted to be able to tumble bigger rocks. Now if I had more lapidary equipment, I could polish those bigger rocks and wouldn't really need a big tumbler like this one. There's quite a bit more to consider, but I think you get the picture. Now even after all of that, if this is something you're still interested in doing, the website Rock Tumbling Hobby is a really great resource. There's even a section of DIY projects there, so that's a pretty good place to start and I'll leave links there and to some other resources in the description below. This was not an easy project. I worked really hard on this. And watching that hard work slowly rotate at 42 and 24 rotations per minute respectively is just something that's almost indescribable. I would think it's akin to like your child graduating college or something. It was a really fun project though. And if I were to do it over again, I probably wouldn't change too much. I can't wait to share the fruits of my labor in future videos. Thanks so much for watching, and if you decide to build your own tumbler, the best of luck to you. Goodbye.